Closed captioning for sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. When the heat of summer ends and the air again becomes cool and crisp, a great fishing opportunity emerges that is bypassed by the sportsmen that hunt and is not commonly understood by many fishermen. This great opportunity is the mating flight of the Crixia, commonly referred to as water boatmen. The boatmen leave the water, fly to nearby trees where they mate, and then return to the water to lay eggs and wait for winter to arrive. The biggest fish in the lake are always looking for an easy meal, and as these boatmen hit the water, the fish eagerly gobble them up. Today we're fishing a small lake just north of Kamloops, BC, near Little Fort, where there are hundreds of lakes to choose from. So join us today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Brought to you in part by Islander Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and Cloudvale Outdoor Gear. Unreal flat fishing at its best. That guy was just cruising around, looking for food. And I put it in front of him, <laughs> and he took it. Well, that was a, a good call. To whoa, come back here. whoa, there he goes. Now he's mad. Oh man, this is gonna be tough because if he gets in those weeds, I'm in trouble. I got a four weight rod. Oh, nice oh fish. man, what a beauty! <laughs> and you know what? I saw him. He was cruising in about you know the two feet of water. Cruising along, cruising along. Yeah. Just lead him. You know the way he's going. Get that fly, you know, four feet in front of him. I allowed it to sink just a little bit. Yep. And then I just saw him dart. And I knew he was going to take it. As soon as he made a move for it, he just, whoop. Dang. <laughs> Unreal. Well, let's get him in and show everybody. Oh. Man. Oh. Boy. Now that, my friends, is a fish. Lay the net down here. When they do take these water bowmen, Steve was telling us they do take them fairly deep, but this guy, Barbless Huck, didn't take it too bad. Mainly because I saw him take it and I was able to, to get him. So we'll hold him up here. He is a nice fish. Oh, right on. There he is there. Nice, nice big male. He's almost in there. He goes. First one I came out here, I kicked. The camera guy said, hey, there's a fish over there. I said, oh, it's a nice big guy. So I kicked over a bit, cast to him, boiled at it. Yeah. Didn't take it. So yeah. we knew they were in here. Yeah. They're cruising around looking for food. So. Oh, well, this is where the guys that are feeding yeah. are in here. Yeah, they are. That was your call to come back in here. Because the guys in the main lake, they're just cruising. They're not really looking for food That's yet. That's right. But it's early. Oh, we're it just getting early. started. I think we're going to have some pretty heavy action. It's noon right now. It's just starting to heat up. Yep. Water bowmen so don't come down really until it warms up. Yeah, about noon is yeah. usually when they should start they coming start. on. Yeah. Right on. That's a good start, though. You bet. Oh, especially when you pick them off in the flats like that. What a rush. See you him, see him yeah. dart for it and boop, take it. I love it. Now, if we can pick off some more. And you don't have your polarized glasses. I don't. You banana. Yeah. I think I'm going to trade you in for a guy that can see. <laughs> I can pick him. <laughs> you can pick him.
and what I've got on is a, an intermediate sink line and I've got a sink tip on the end of it so it's actually getting down quite a ways. And casting into the weeds, oh, I'll just change it up a little bit. So I cast it out from the weeds, oh, there he is out there. Oh, he's a nice fish. Oh, this guy's getting in the weeds. Come on up out of there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're a nasty boy. <laughs> Good fighter, I gotta make sure I don't get too close to the weeds here with the wind. Well, the wind's picked up. I guess just what you expect on a on a lake like this. Nice, uh, nice bit of breeze, which is probably good. I mean, there's not as many crickets in the air yet. I can probably wait till a bit later to come out because of the wind. But it's good for when they do come up to the surface because with the wind breaking the waves a little bit, it just adds to the stealth factor for us trying to catch the fish. They're not so skittish coming up to the top to catch the, to take the natural flyer, to take the, the ultimate boatman, which is what we're using today. Oh, look at that. Hey, eh? that's a nice fish. A beauty. Oh. Nice, healthy, fat. Just on the edge too. Okay, now lift him out. Show everybody. Oh, look at that fish. <laughs> That's <laughs> old. <laughs> and off he goes. I just came over here because I noticed that there were a few fish rolling in the real shallow water. And I put that boatman out there and sure enough, one grabbed it. That's a nice one. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Big fish. Yeah. This one probably spawned this year. and She's just coming back into, into good shape, but she's a pretty nice fish all the same. Oh, yeah. Oh, beauty. There. Yeah, that's gorgeous. You betcha. A little skinny, but... Yeah, uh, beautiful fish, though, yeah. Yeah, she's coming back into shape real nice. Yeah. And there she goes. <laughs> On the Carixia. Just took that boatman, just bang. The ultimate boatman. I had uh, I had one on right here, and he popped off. Yeah. And I heard a big splash behind me. I turned around, fired it in the splash, and took it almost immediately. <laughs> What's happening? They're coming on. It, it yeah, is. Yeah, Don's on to... too. Don's got one too. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Gee. What a fish. What a toad. Wow. Oh man, he's all hooked on the weeds. I have to get him up right here. Cause he's right in those weeds and I got I can't I can't get him up. Yeah. They're tough in these weeds. It's another toad though. Oh, look at that fish. Hi, <laughs> fish. What a beauty, eh? Yeah, right on. Right in that, uh, right in the nice weeds. Unreal take. Phenomenal. Well, they're splashing around, you know, and you can see them. Yep. Splash yep. around in here. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice one, Steve. It is. It's Another a dandy. A real hog. So while you're reeling this guy in, while you're battling him, why don't we tell a little bit about the Crixias? Kind of why we're fishing them, you know, when they come out and hatch, all the rest of that kind it's, of fun stuff. It, uh, the hatch is, is not really a hatch, it's a mating flight. And it happens in the fall, usually just after the first frost okay. triggers it. And you get these beautiful days where you get that nice flat fall light. Because it is right now, it's September 16th, uh -huh. and we're at a beautiful lake up here in the Caribou, and uh, it is. It's phenomenal Crixia fishing. Yeah, they're, uh, they're not flying as thick as they were the other day than when I was here, but, uh, but they are starting to fly now. Well, that's the key. 
and, and plus it was a little windier early and I think they like the flatter water too. I think they could break the surface tension of the water a little easier. I think that's what it is and, and they, they like this nice calm sunny day and it's usually peaks at the zenith when the sun's way above you. Yeah, beautiful. And usually goes all afternoon and then quits when the sun drops behind the yard arm there. And <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's get this guy in and have a peek at him. There he is. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a real that's a hog. beauty. Look at how thick he is. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> that nice little water boatman just caught right in the scissors there. Barbless hooks, Barbless as always. Hooks, it'll just pop right out there, yeah. Oh. And we'll we just lift him up for people to look at. Yeah. Him. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, baby. Got him? Yeah, there we go. Oh, look at how about that. that. Look at how thick he is. <laughs> that's a big, healthy oh, fish. That's a beautiful fish. Way you go, baby. Beautiful. There he goes, right to the bottom. Hey, hey. All right. Excellent. Well, you know what? That pattern is absolutely smoking. Why don't we uh, head to the bench right now and tie it up? You betcha. You don't mind showing everybody? No. It's, uh, it's my own pattern, but yeah. uh, I think it's time to share it. Excellent. Let's go to the bench and you'll see one of these great Crixia patterns. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today I'm joined by Steve Jennings of the Camels Fly Shop. And you're going to tie me up a... The Jennings Ultimate Boatman. The Jennings Ultimate Boatman. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a TMC 9300 size 10. We'll use some 6 aught olive brown thread. We'll use a half inch tan foam body. We'll use some Panatone pens for the body coloring. We'll use some medium olive span flex for the legs. Some Dave's Flex Cement for the back coating. And some Aqua Seal for the belly coating. So we're ready to start the fly, and uh, what's our first step? Well, we're going to take a half inch foam body, which is a pre-made body, and we're going to um, slice it and color it, color the underside with our Pantone pen and the olive color, and you do one side first, and then you can do the other side. And now we're going to slice a uh, slit down the, uh, the length of the body and two little slits for the legs to sit in. Okay. And we've got a specially modified um, razor blade to do that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to make a slice down to the point. Then we're going to slice our legs, slots for our legs, about halfway down the body with about a five degree angle towards the front. Now that we have the body cut, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to put my glasses on because I can see, and we're going to put um, the thread onto the hook, and then come back about halfway along. Okay, now we're going to put in our legs and uh, take a length of our span flex, and we're going to double it over and cut it, and then double over again and cut it. Now we're going to measure where our legs are going to go. So we've got a little slot in our body and we just make sure that the thread is right at that point with the front of the body against the eye of the hook. So that's right. Now we put our leg in and try to get it more or less at the right angle. We do a nice soft loop just to hold it in and another soft loop and then come back and do a couple of soft loops the other way and then we bring our thread back to the front of the hook and at this point we can whip finish it. Now we're going to put a little bit of aqua seal, squeeze a little bit out of the tube and just pick it up on a needle and then we just spread that along the hook like so and now we put our body on to the hook by bending it like that and just pushing up and the hook sits into the little slot that's made for it and then just a little pull on the flat span flex. Now we're going to pick up a little bit bigger glob of aqua seal on the end of our needle, about an eighth of an inch diameter. I'm going to coat the whole back. Aqua seal is very sticky and uh, can't be handled, so get a piece of styrofoam packing from your audio equipment and just pop the fly into that and leave that to dry overnight. Excellent. And uh, now we have one that has dried overnight and we're just going to clamp it in a pair of forceps so that we can handle it now. And we're going to trim our legs to the correct length. 
And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to push the legs forward until they cross about five eighths of an inch away from where they come out of the body and just snip at the cross point. Okay, now we take our chartreuse um, Pantone pen and we color the head of the fly. Now we take our black Pantone pen. We make our marking on the back. It's kind of like a wine glass shape and a couple of the markings of the back and a little bit down the side. And now we take our red Pantone pen and we make our eyes. And now, uh, there's one more step, run a black streak down there on top of the aqua seal. Our last step on this fly is to get some Dave's Flex Cement. And I thin this down a little bit, about uh, 75% flex cement, 25% thinner. And you get a bead of uh, the uh, flex cement and you just coat the back like this. Carefully not to touch the legs. You don't want this stuff on the legs. But you just coat the back. And when this dries, it gives a dusky look, like a, a satin look. And it also helps to seal in that Pantone color. And there it is, the finished Jennings Ultimate Boatman. Beautiful. This flyer really comes into its own during the fall uh, when the boatmen are doing their mating flights. Excellent. Well, thanks for the tie. Really appreciate it. Stay tuned. Got some more great action coming right up. Well, that should bring back some awesome memories of being down on Little Corn Island, Nicaragua. What an incredible place to fish. We're a long ways away from Nicaragua. Right now I'm in Kamloops with Al Long, who's the owner manager of the Kamloops Fly Shop, which is a brand new fly shop just opened up in Kamloops. And, you know, the whole industry of fly fishing really boomed after a river runs through it. I don't like to say it's, it's stagnant now. It's grown to a very large number of people who love to fly fish, but it seems to maybe have leveled off. I guess I'm a little surprised that maybe you would open up a, a new fly shop because there doesn't seem to be a lot of new fly shops opening. Well, that's true. It, um, it has flattened out a little bit, uh, our industry, but um, more and more people are coming up this way uh, at the interior and, and uh, sampling our, our trout fishing, especially our neighbors to the south. Uh, they enjoy the, you know, the less crowded waters and, uh, right. and uh, usually some larger fish than, than they're used to down there, um, especially our rivers. Uh, hardly anyone fishes our ri rivers in the interior. and and uh, they're a great opportunity to, uh, to get out. Well, um, when you think of the Kamloops area, I mean, first thing that comes to mind is the Kamloops strain rainbow trout, which is an incredible rainbow. And in the lakes, I mean, everybody thinks lakes when you come to this area. I'm surprised that you would mention rivers. They're less crowded and uh, they're beautiful. They're a bit of an access problem. Um, they're not as easy to get around on as some of the rivers in the States, but uh, well worth it. Um, especially when the salmon are running, we have a very unique uh, fishing opportunity where we run uh, flies like this, the glow bugs uh, in behind the sockeye salmon in yeah. the springs for the large rainbows that are up feeding on them. So you got the good rivers, but you also have the Great Lakes too. Uh, the Great Lakes, yes. We're very fortunate to uh, have some excellent managers in this region and have really kept the fishing uh, at its premium. If you're into cronomid fishing in the springtime, then you were talking off camera in the fall how good it yes. is as well. Cronomid yes. fishing in this area is just second to none. So you got the fly shop going now and you run guiding service out of the fly shop. And, and tell me a little bit more about it. Well, the, the shop is a bit unique. Um, we've uh, designed it and decorated it uh, using some of the old lumber from a, a barn that was purchased in the area. So it gives it a bit of a country look. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking the time. You're welcome. And good luck. Thank you. Well, we just stopped and had a little, little lunch. Steve made us a very nice lunch. And just trolling back out because we're thinking we were fishing in the shallows and and we haven't seen any while we're eating lunch, any rising up, so we started to come out and I think this guy's got me weeded. Uh, and uh, this guy plugged it on the way out. Here he comes. There he goes. He's out of the weeds now. Here he comes up. Look at the weeds. Oh. Let's see, they are healthy fish here. Teeth are big. Big, big fish, and they just love this Corixia. The ultimate boatman. There he goes again. Come back up here. Come on, another. Probably not going to like this net at all. Oh. 
<laughs> Look at that, he just barely fits in his net. Whoa. Hard to pick up even. There he goes. Look at that. That is a big fish. And there he goes. Whoa. Get to the bottom of the sock. Man, they're huge in here and they just they don't slam the cricks. I kind of expected them to maybe take a little more aggressively than what they have, but I think once they come up on top, that's when they're going to be hammering on a little more than what they are. Oh, nice fish, though. Yeah, I knew as soon as I hooked them up, you get the good head shake and yeah. you get a good one. Well, let's get some more. Right on. Well, Steve, that was an excellent day of fishing. Thank you very much. Hey, you're welcome. Really enjoyed it. There's a couple times a year when you can get the big fish coming up to the top. That's right, uh, in the springtime in June when the traveler sedge hatch is happening and this time in September when the, uh, when the water boatmen are flying and you'll get the biggest fish in the lake coming up and feeding on the surface. Pretty impressive. But a lot of people don't know about it though, do they, in the fall? I think a lot of people just use the fall to go hunting and yeah. ignore yeah, the that's fishing. True. Yeah, and they miss out on some of the best. They miss out on some great fishing. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks for that pattern today too. That pattern, I'm going to use it lots. I know it's uh, real special. Well, we'll go to a lake in the fall for sure. Yep. It was excellent. When you do, though, make sure you take care. And conserve the waters. Done a great job in the caribou region here, and it shows a lot of big fish. Yeah, an excellent day. See you next time. When we take you sport fishing on the fly. <laughs>